The focus of this video is on the integration of shop floor machinery into Microsoft Dynamics AX. It goes beyond the simple harvesting of data from your machines into a more advanced bisynchronous integration directly into AX processes for true visibility from the top floor to the shop floor. In order to do this, I'll start with some basic terminology, talk about both the operational and the financial gains from this approach, and then discuss the advantages of a bisynchronous approach. At that point, I'll drill down to the actual points of integration within AX operational steps. I've also included a brief video to show a true bisynchronous integration within AX. So let's get started. It's important to understand there's always a layer of technology between your shop floor machines and any ERP system. This layer is commonly referred to as a Manufacturing Execution System, or MES. Commercial systems, such as Wonderware and Merlin, are common in the enterprise space. Ellipse Solutions has provided links to both of these systems using the same principles I'll discuss in this presentation. However, if you're like the vast majority of our customers, you may have already built your own system to harvest the data from your machines. Integrating these customized homegrown MES systems into AX can be incredibly advantageous. Out of the box, AX offers basic integration with the shop floor. This is called Shop Floor Control in AX 2009 and Manufacturing Execution System in AX 2012. Some companies have found this functionality to be too basic and require too much manual entry of data, which slows down processes. What is really needed is real-time, automatic communication with the machines to have enterprise visibility into processes as they happen. Many companies don't want to simply harvest data from the machines, but instead want to be able to push products, bombs, and orders directly from AX out to the machines. This requires true bisynchronous integration. The initial operational analysis of the advantages of this type of integration are fairly obvious. The elimination of operator error and data entry is basic data processing integrity. Communicating part counts, run times, error codes, and analyzing machine downtime are obvious advantages. What may not be so obvious is the depth of integration you can affect in AX. Production or job completion data is available within AX as it happens. Inventory management can automatically update with items consumed and produced. Raw material finished good entries are made in real time. Product management results enforcing job standards are there when it happens. Analyzing machine asset utilization can be linked to fixed asset maintenance routines, and downtime reason codes can be diced and sliced by machine, operation, shift, operator, or any other parameter measure. HR time and attendance can be monitored through machine operator logins, and piece counts can be integrated when such a measurement affects compensation. Quality control can be automated with reject counts and reason codes scrap entries can be made as they happen. These advantages will be attractive to any member of your operational and financial team, but there's always someone in your organization that's monitoring the return on investment of any IT integration project, and it's important that these factors be shared to gain management approval. Mimics Automation provided us with survey results from their clients that show how easily these projects pay for themselves. The most impressive results are the overall improvements in production, and operations that result in an average project ROI within 90 days. But it's easy to paint with a broad brush, so what are the individual factors that make up such a dramatic ROI? Well, according to their customers, it breaks down to many individual factors like real-time machine visibility, reduced downtime through more effective scheduling, labor productivity tracking, and benchmarking capabilities. As you look at each of the areas identified on this slide, you'll understand the ROI analysis process is made up of a lot of smaller factors with a noticeable increase in operational profitability. If you're already measuring these things, you'll notice the improvements right away. If you're not, you'll be glad to get started. Most companies we meet began by initiating a simple, one-way data harvesting integration with their shop floor machinery. While this is a great first start, it usually involves reconciliation of two different planning and scheduling process tools. It also implies a communications gap when bombs or job cards are modified for a specific order on the fly. A true bisynchronous integration allows for a single version of the truth across the board. No more reconciliation of production orders or job cards. A single scheduling tool can be used and production orders can be reprioritized in real time from the top floor to the shop floor. 
the result is more effective and up-to-date production planning that takes into account production revisions as they occur. So let's take a moment and visualize a true bisynchronous integration within Dynamics AX. To do that, it's important to look at the standard steps in a Dynamics AX production order. As you know, there are a lot more steps that can be used, but these are the important steps from the standpoint of a bisynchronous link. First and foremost, it's important that the integration provides true access to the master data tables in AX for a single version of the truth regarding things like orders, bombs, routes, cost estimates, and order scheduling. Now your AX system has the ability to schedule and release orders directly to your shop floor systems. Then the system can report back on route or job card progress or deviations, picking or material use, and of course, reporting completion. So let's take a moment to look at both sides of the data integration table. In terms of the first part of data integration, the information that's pushed from AX out to the shop floor systems, the most important time-saving element is a single version of the truth for products, bombs, routes, and estimates. Since you're now communicating directly to the shop floor from your planning and scheduling tools to release orders to the system, you can reprioritize orders on the fly in a single step, and I'll demonstrate that to you in a moment. And you'll see progress in real time. The single source of data eliminates reconciliation and allows you to roll out revised bombs or routes in real time and new product rollouts to the shop floor become much simpler. The second part of the bisynchronous link, which pushes information from the shop floor machines back to AX, allows you to watch orders progress as they occur. Route and job cards are updated in real time, and more efficiently pre-approved bomb substitutions are booked as they happen. This return information also allows for updating of inventory tables, cost tables, automated finished good entries, as well as the HR, payroll, and fixed asset entries we discussed earlier. Since you now have a single version of what's going on, there's no need to go back and integrate reports from third-party shop floor systems into financial reports from AX. You have a single database to slice and dice using the reporting tools already available to you in Dynamics AX or other third-party tools. So now let's stop talking about it and review a demonstration of this type of integration in action. As I said earlier, Ellipse Solutions has provided a link to the Merlin system, a third-party MES system. So let's go to John as he shows some of the more obvious operational advantages. Here we're in Microsoft Dynamics, and we're taking a look at uh, the particular work orders that are available. If we uh, filter it down to the CEU work orders that we're dealing with, you can see that there's none in the ending in 23, which is what we're going to do now, and create a new production work order production order and gets uh, established we create the dialog we key in the number 23 we then do a search on the particular item ID we pull that one up directly from one that we want to produce and it comes up to automatically with the, with the list again through Dynamics AX part of the product standards standard uh, lot size of five to run with this one we create the production order we now it's known it's part of the list. So we're looking at all production orders. If we filter that down to the ones we're looking for, we're going to find our particular work order that we just created. And there it is, number 23. So we then at this point say, okay, let's estimate this particular work order. What's the cost going to be? Timing, scheduling, and planning. Put that through in terms of Dynamics AX to do that. You'll see the status has now changed to estimated. So we're in a position to start actually processing and manufacturing this particular product. So we then key in on the particular same work order and say, okay, what are we going to do in this stage here? Let's take a look at the routing so we understand what we're working with. And the particular routing is made up of six individual operation steps, 10 through 15. We see the runtime associated with each, the stepping uh, operation steps accordingly. We see the resource requirements running on particular machine 102. So we know the resource of uh, each of those uh, particular steps and operations. If we check machine 102, we're now on the Merlin dashboard. We're looking at the machine detail for machine 102. We see the current work order is a different one that's running right now because we haven't actually loaded it onto Merlin at this point. We can see that we're in the job queue. We can see the current running work order. We can see the, key, the jobs that are in the queue. Again, not loaded from Dynamics yet. Take another view in the visual job queue. We look at the um, actual jobs in the queue. And again, for machine 102, those ones aren't there. So now we're going to say, let's actually 
schedule this particular job to run to MX Merlin system. So we say OK. We find the particular job to run. We say OK. And this job is now created and it is sent to the production order electronically to the Memex Merlin manufacturing execution system. So we see that's there, we push OK, and we're fired off to Memex Merlin. So we'll go take a look and see where it is in Memex at this point, having verified that it wasn't there before. We do have to start the particular job, so we make sure that that's started. We say it's there, so it's ready to run in terms of the status. We obviously have to keep track of it within Dynamics to know exactly what we're working with. You see we're machine 102, you see the current jobs. We refresh the list at this point and notice all those operation steps are now in the queue ready to be run. It's still running the existing work order that's on the machine, so we haven't asked it to run it yet, but we will shortly. So now we check again just another view in the visual job queue, and again you can see those operation steps are now loaded and ready to be processed. So we then turn around and look at the operator interface, and the operator can actually run multiple machines here. We check the work orders, and there you go. There's the operation steps already loaded with different sequence numbers and so on that we can control. So we say, there you go, five parts required. We say accept that work order, and let's actually run that. You'll notice the current running work order will now change, and the new one is up and running for the parts that we're trying to produce. So we're in a, in a view that we can see this. Let's take a look at it at the machine detail screen of the dashboard. We see the new work order that's put together there. It's ready to go. Uh, we're synchronizing the main server in terms of detail information. We take a view, we refresh the view of the job queue. We can see what the current running job is as we've loaded. The other ones are still in the queue ready to go. We can see now that the uh, parts have been reset uh, for part counts. So we're tracking status for the job as it is now running um, on the actual machine. So we see here on the machine it's running zero parts produced, five parts required, we're ready to go. And we can see that the other work orders are still in the queue ready to go for next ones. And we'll run those as we go forward to process this particular job. We also have the ability to look at many other areas when we're in that particular status of the machines. And now we'll notice we've run, we've actually run through to job fit operation step 15. We had a number of parts produced, so we can see that we've got three good parts, one reject, and five parts required, but four parts are made. So we're just about at the end of the cycle here. And we take a look, and we see that we have one particular reject or scrap reason. If we go down and check the scrap reasons, and here's a particular view that we can see from machine 102. We see the machine, there is a scrap for not applicable. In this particular case, it was picked up by the machines. And we can graphically look at that in different areas. And we know the percentages and pie chart breakdowns, 3Ds, however you want to do. All based upon the good tool set from Microsoft. And we see here, that's what, what we're working with in terms of the dashboard for the actual accounts in itself. Notice we're in production hold. It's just in the process of changing over to the new job. In fact, as we watch here, we can see the job has actually changed over. And we can see the new particular work order it's running. So our last one is complete in the real-time screens. We now go back to Microsoft Dynamics and we say, let's view for that particular work order what the results were. So what was reported as finished that came from Memex Merlin? And we can see here we're pulling up the particular lines and the detail for that particular job. And we can see here now that that job has been completed, reported as finished in dynamics of a good part of one and a reject part of sorry, reject part of one and a good part of four, exactly as what we reported on the Memex Merlin system. So we've gone through and shown a two-way link downloading production orders to the machines and then the results from the machines back into the uh, Dynamics AX ERP system. I hope that video helped you visualize the possibilities in a true bisynchronous integration. To summarize, let's go over some of the key points to remember. Many of our customers started out by telling us their shop floor machines were too old for such an integration. We have a partner who specializes in retrofitting just about any machine with a port on it, so don't let that slow you down. Also, please consider the licensing implications of this proposed integration scenario. The entire integration can be done using a single enterprise user license in AX. There's no need to extend licenses onto the shop floor machines as with many other systems. And remember, your operational people will understand the value first, but financial ROI models are easy to build from the granular gains I've discussed. And if you're going to take the time and expense of integration, 
while you're already under the hood, remember a simple one-way data harvesting solution provides minimal operational advantages. A true bisynchronous link is the way to go. We suggest to most of our customers that they start with a single production line and roll out the system to other lines for user acceptance. This also gives your internal resources time to learn and add value. If you have any questions or need help with your integration project, reach out to us here at Ellipse Solutions. We have the experience you need to succeed. We've provided links to Wonderware and Merlin Automation, as well as have vast experience with a variety of custom shop floor systems. We can certainly help you do it right the first time.